What's going on everybody? Matt Souders, aka DJ Noji with the P3 experience. The experience that you deserve. So I'm not sure if you caught my previous video on the ceremony event flow. I'll leave a link in the description below as well as the link for the reception event flow PDF that I'll be using for this video. You can pull that up and follow along. Uh, you can completely avoid this video and just click on the link and go through it yourself. But this might be helpful if you just kind of hear some of the tidbits and points that I make. It might make more sense if you just go with along with it with the video. Uh, it is a Google Doc, um, so hopefully uh, you'll be able to open that. If not, uh, maybe along the timeline, I'll be able to put it up on my blog as well. Either way, you'll be able to find it. So I want to go over this. Uh, if you didn't check out the ceremony video do that if you have a ceremony most people do <laughs> check it out this is going to be regarding and leading up to the reception portion so let's go leading up to the reception portion there is typically a cocktail hour typically maybe not in every case i'm just going to talk briefly about this cocktail hour in my opinion ceremony music wise everything should be progressing throughout the whole evening so it should be you know ceremony whether it's seating music blah 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 and then it should be progressing so by the time you get to cocktail hour it should be definitely higher than ceremony in my opinion but i know every wedding is going to be different use your own discretion it's just my piece of advice so but most of the time my bride and groom are not at the cocktail hour maybe at the tail end or something like that um, but typically they're not they're off taking pictures videos hanging out um, maybe even chilling before the grand entrance all are acceptable it's totally cool whatever you want to do but if your family is a huge on 80s rock maybe give them some 80s rock during the uh, cocktail hour portion if you're not going to play 80s rock during the dancing portion this kind of helps them, I guess, you know, it, it, <laughs> let's, let, let's just be honest. Typically, you know, especially when drinks are flowing, people want to hear what they want to hear and they want to dance to what they really like. So if you kind of give them a little bit of something during the cocktail hour, it kind of leaves a better taste in their mouth when you're playing nothing but hip hop uh, during your reception dancing portion. So maybe not always, but at least you gave them something. So, and you're not going to be there, so you might as well give them a little bit of something. Uh, the other thing is you can definitely find a lot of playlists on Spotify. Uh, I might have some playlists available if you look at the P3 experience on Spotify. Um, let's see if there's anything else regarding cocktail hour. Um, that should be it. And it should be pretty low key um, as far as making that decision. Leave it up to your DJ um, if, if you want to. So, totally up to you. All right, let's get it moving on to the reception portion so i'm going to be following along right here in my pdf so you can too uh, have it pulled up all right so a couple things that i like to do i'm going to show you walk through some preferences that i do as well so i'm going to ask you um, and you could put it on here if you're one of my couples uh, you could uh, put it on uh, on your on the google doc as well at the very top header i like to put the name like more of a personal name um not more of a formal name so at the grand entrance you're going to have something possibly that's more formal than what i'll put at the header so for instance if you want to be called pooh bear and snuggle bunny then put pooh bear and snuggle bunny because your whole family knows you as pooh bear and snuggle bunny i might say hey come join pooh bear and snuggle bunny on the dance floor everybody knows who that is everybody connect with that <laughs> and they will join you on the dance floor um and this you know hey join pooh bear and snuggle bunny over at the cake something like that you know uh so it's up to you but that's something that i like to do and just to make sure just because you know i'm all about my stories because i mean this is more than just the couples my couples using this video so but I like to use illustrations as well. So back in the day uh, when I was uh, learning how learning how to book and, and stuff like that, I almost double booked a wedding. And they were friends of mine too. 
upset that I did not get to DJ their wedding. And what made it even worse was one of the companies that they used mispronounced their name. Not once, not twice, but three times. <sighs> never, never, never. I spell names phonetically that we'll get into, but that's another reason why I put the names at the top on my DJ playlist, like, um, you know, on Spotify or whatever, or even on uh, whatever playlist I'm, I'm utilizing on my computer. I name it Brian and Mary reception dinner brian and mary dancing you know first dance all that stuff i i name it that so that way i'm always keeping in the back of my head it's mr and mrs smith or brian and mary smith whatever so that's something that i do personally just to make sure that your names are always at the top of my on, on the tip of my tongue top of my head so i don't have to search for it in any portion um another thing i like to do going going into the pdf uh address of the venue then around st louis uh venues are popping up all the time make sure you click on the link whatever i sent out a google calendar invite just to make sure and so i i will send out if your reception is from 6 to 11 or if it's all day affair or whatever um so let's just say it's from 6 to 11 i'll put from 6 to 11 and I will put what package you get, any other minor details regarding the package, like projector, um, up lights, stuff like that. I'll put that in the description. But what's most importantly is I show up to the right venue <laughs> in regards to Google Maps or whatever uh, is, is within the calendar. Click on that. Ensure that it is correct. That it's not sending you into the field next door. Um, so yeah, you might have to think about that too, as you're creating your RSVPs, where's Google maps, where's Apple maps, whatever sending you, um, to the venue. It's important to know. So, uh, another thing I like to know are the colors of the wedding party. So I don't necessarily want to look like the wedding party. I just want to kind of blend in. So if the colors of the day are, um, green, blue, yellow, um, I might come up with maybe, I don't know, a light blue shirt with a yellow tie or a gold tie, something like that, just to kind of blend in and, and look like I'm a part of some of, of your day. Now, moving on next, I, I'm not huge on timelines. That's just me personally. I know um, coordinators are big on timelines, so this is kind of where we butt heads just a little bit. I, I honestly, I don't care. I don't like to push that much. I just need to know when your photographer and videographer is leaving and what you want to get accomplished by the time they leave. So for instance, I mean, and I know there's some audibles called throughout the evening and stuff like that. We have to move stuff around based on who shows up when and, and if everything's running on time, it's going to happen. It's inevitable. So if you have a good DJ MC, they should be able to quarterback a few things just to make sure everything is running smoothly. Um, without even anybody ever even noticing, um, even though maybe the, the bride and groom or whoever is involved, but that's besides the point. I just need want to know when, when the photographer is leaving. So if you want to get the cake or the cake doesn't matter, then we won't do the cake by then unless we sneak it in somewhere else. Uh, if you want to do, I don't know, like the dollar dance or just, I know that's kind of old school, but I'm just saying, if you want to get the dollar dance in with the pictures, then we do it before eight o'clock. If you want to do shoe game before eight o'clock, cause you want it in the pictures. Some couples, they want to do the shoe game, but they don't care if it's in the pictures. Let's do it after eight o'clock. Uh, that's just some examples. So uh, another thing, text the DJ or MC or event coordinator, or somebody point person, uh, before you're arriving, just say, hey, DJ, showing up in 15 minutes. Now, this is my opinion. Don't let the bride and groom do it. Shouldn't be their job. Shouldn't be your job. Give it to best man, maid, matron of honor, somebody down line. Doesn't matter. You should be enjoying yourself the moment or each other at this point. Um, now, another thing. Use YouTube links or uh, a, a playlist to put your songs all the songs just to make sure that we have the right one so for instance if you're putting this together in a google doc and you want 
the edition from, I know it's old school, but like maybe Garth Brooks, 1988, when he was in Paris. Put the YouTube link, copy and paste right on in the, right on in the Google Doc. I want to make sure that it's available somewhere. If not, then I have to rip it. I just can't make up something out of nothing. Uh, Spotify playlists, you know, is, is a great list to know that, you know, because sometimes I, it might be a Spotify special and I can't get that anywhere else but Spotify. So if you do, just make sure whatever song you want, make sure it is available. All right, let's talk about the introduction, grand entrance. Which would be the start time. So when are you gunning to start your reception grand entrance? That's a great question. So typically by then, um, whether you're running late or whether you're running on time, let's just say we're doing it from 6 to 10. So um, start time, 6 o'clock. That's typically when my reception starts. Um, so basically what I will do as cocktail hour is concluding um, it may be whatever, whatever, let's just say it's a nineties alternative that they're listening to. I will go out, I'll go out, make sure everybody's, um, lined up. I'll go over names. I do names phonetically. So if your name is O'Connor, I'll probably put O and then, you know, apostrophe Connor. Um, if it's, uh, uh, Spike and Heiser. I'll put Spike in Heiser. I'm not going to spell it Spike and Heiser because it might be P F H I K A J L M N O P. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm going to spell it phonetically in my PDF the way I'm going to say it. So that's something important to go over. Uh, the song. You need to know the song. Are you going to do one song for the entire grand entrance? Are you going to have the wedding party come in? Is it just going to be Mr. and Mrs.? Um, is everybody going to get a song? You know, every couple might be the bride and groom. Some uh, bride and grooms uh, these days are wanting the whole uh, wedding party just to come in. So they might, might just come in just one person at a time or all collect collectively together. Maybe do a shot, do a drink, something like that. Um, if you want to do names, if you don't even want the wedding party to come in, maybe they'll be up at the head table or couple sweetheart table waiting for you. And it may just be you two coming in. So also, so for me, I don't do last names. I don't do middle names. I don't do hair color. I don't do height, weight. I don't do any of that. Typically, I like to do first names only. Mary and Joe. Now, you can do Mary with Joe. You can do Mary... Are Joe Mary escorted by Joe? Uh, those are a couple things that uh, different entrances that I like to do. Um, and then uh, now this is just me. Most of the time, I would leave out the parents unless they want to come in. I would leave out the flower girl ring bearer. They are tapped out. They are done. They don't want to be a part of it. They love you, but they are done. Especially if they're they're under the, under the teenage um they yeah they're they're done so just leave them out they don't want to look at the camera anymore they don't want to be anywhere they didn't want to be there in the first place most time but um hopefully it was a good time for them anyway so just yeah just go ahead and my opinion just leave them out and then of course you know bride and groom how do you want to be pronounced is it mr and mrs is it mr and mrs brian smith is it mr and mrs brian and jessica smith uh, I've had some couples say they don't want to do uh, last name because maybe um, there's some you know family feud or whatever, so they'll just say Mr. or Mrs. Um, it's up to you, but um, that would be right there. Now, I like to do two songs. I like to do, if you're going to do the wedding party, I like to do one song for the whole entire wedding party and then one song for the bride and groom. Now, in my opinion, another thing your song should be way better unless it means something you know like oh i gotta have you know like i had a friend uh do you, you got a friend in me uh the first the wedding party song was amped up and then it came down to you have a friend in me that's all right too whatever you want in my opinion it should be i mean it should be 
thrown down by the time you get to the bride and groom. All right, so next up, um, what uh, I, depending on what time now, so there, there's a couple time frames you need to um, evolve everything around. It's just, it's just me based off of the majority of weddings that I do. It is either dinner and then you also have sunset pictures, sunset photos. Everything evolves around dinner and sunset photos, more sunset photos, because honestly, you're never going to get that time again. So if you need to figure out your timeline on when you start your entire day, it is around those sunset photos. Bottom line. Because guess what? You don't want to be stuck in the middle of, you know, something that's going on important when you should be out taking photos because you're never going to get that time again. Just my opinion. Uh, so, so yeah, so we need to know dinner music. What are you going to have? What do you have for cocktail hour? What are you going to have for dinner music? Um, some couples want, you know, something a little, a little more, uh, a little more than cocktail hour, but sometimes it'll take a step back from cocktail hour too. Cocktail hour can be, you know, a little more vibing a little bit and dinner can be, you know, a little less, maybe not putting yourself to sleep, putting others to sleep. Uh, but also, um, you know, you want to make it interesting and maybe give everybody a fill. You know, like for me, I, I always try to recommend something for everybody. Uh, cause typically most weddings, grandma and grandpa's there, parents are there, and you know, also the friends. So you're going to have a variety of age, age groups to, you know, give them something while they're listening to dinner. It doesn't have, like I said, it doesn't have to be sleepy music. Um, let's see. So song, I mean, and you don't have to ever do in my opinion. You don't have to ever do a DJ's job. Sometimes you can be like, you know what? I like eighties rave music. Pick some eighties rave music and go to town. So don't get bogged down in, in some of these details. If that's not your forte, if that's something you're not overly excited about. So there you go. Um, I need to know if when you do the grand entrance, what do you want to do right after the grand entrance? Now, here's where I butt heads with the event coordinator. In my opinion, depending on what time it is and, and what you had for cocktail hour, if you just had some finger food, no offense. When you get to the reception, grand entrance, do a welcome thank you. If you're going to do a prayer, do a prayer and then eat. Ain't nobody listening when it comes down to doing your dance and all the dances and all the toast. Everybody's like, man, I, I didn't hear a thing you said. I'm starving. So in my opinion, now I, I've, you know, I kind of think through the process uh, a little bit more. Um, now, I know every, uh, every situation is not going to be the same, and some venues are different. Sometimes you have to do certain things by certain times. For me, my couples, my couples are the most important things. I honestly could care less about the baker. I don't care less about the, the candy man and the candlestick maker. I really don't care. I care about my couples. I care about what's important to them, what needs to be done. That's how I do my event flow. And I come with all my conclusion on how we're going to do things. And that's how you should too. But once again, that's just me. So for instance, um, sometimes it might work where you need to do the cake up front. It is what it is. Um, don't, don't necessarily fight it too much. Um, but I leave room later on for downtime when there's nothing to do. Or you can take advantage of, you know, uh, uh, before something else is going to happen. And, and I'll explain a little bit more as I'm going through. So, in my opinion, you do the grand entrance. I always recommend my bride and groom to do a thank you welcome. Unless there's a parent that or relative that wants and needs to get on the mic. This is when you can hand it off to them. Say here. Say something quick. Say 
uh, uh, you know, give them a time limit, give them three, five minutes tops. Once again, everybody's hungry. So now I did have one time. I did not say anything. I did not say anything about doing a toast. I said, you're going to do a welcome. Thank you. They took it as they were doing a toast. I literally had a father of the bride stand up and say, I need a drink. He walked literally probably 50 feet, nice and slow. I had no music going, so it was super awkward. So guess who got up then? Moms on both sides got up, said, oh, we need to get the drink. We need to get the toast ready. It wasn't necessarily time for that. I didn't say anything about it. I said exactly what we were going to do. Going to go grand entrance. Welcome. Thank you, father of the bride that wanted to say something. We're going to do a prayer and we're going to eat. That's it. And then next thing you know, well, who else had to give their speech? The maid and the matron of honor had to give their speech. So in what made the situation worse was that once again it was about the um the sunset photos i was like man i strategically do everything i push everything along for sunset photos because you only get one shot so that was the reason why we didn't do anything in the front end i didn't say anything about doing anything in the front end so it's very important um to go over these details um, and, and to once again plan strategically about these things, kind of get a rough estimated time um, when things are going to go. So once again, go back to the welcome. Thank you. It's a welcome. Thank you. Like welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. I know some of you traveled um, quite a ways to be here and celebrate with us. Thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. We appreciate it. Let's party. It could be something as quick as that. And then next thing you know, Uncle John, will you please come up here and say the prayer? And then we're going to eat. That's it. That's it. And we go into eating. Everybody goes and eats. Now, typically for me, um, most of the time, I expect to release tables. So unless I'm told otherwise, I expect to be releasing tables. I'll communicate with them, you know, eh, and let them know. I'm, I usually go to their table. And just make conversation um, while they're waiting and stuff like that. Uh, just let me know if you have a prioritization on which table you need to go first. Now, I'm only assuming sometimes, unless you have like table numbers that you want to go by. So just let the DJ know that too. Now, so then what happens is by time the, the last person gets their food. Okay, and they're coming back to sit down. Let's just say it's buffet style, right? So the last person gets their food, they come and sit down. That's when I like to do toast speeches. You can call them toast, you can call them speeches, wherever you're from, tomato, tomato. Toast speeches from the matron of honor, best man, whoever. Now, going back to uh, the beginning, in my opinion, three to five toast speeches is is adequate enough before you, you start going overboard in my opinion because once again it starts to be long and, and drawn out if you have over three or over five you know so if you have four or six i would have maybe a toast speech in the front okay that's the only time really i would ask somebody to do whether it's a matron maid of honor best man if you have a matron honor and a best man speech but you have four to six of those, maybe put the best man in the front and then, and then we're going to eat something like that. Just separate it just a little bit. Uh, give them a little taste and then let the matron of honor shut it down. So uh, let's see. So yeah, so everybody eats. And then the reason why, several reasons uh, why I do this toast speeches there because everybody's eating. Everybody's, you know, it's, 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 it's an audience. They're, they're doing nothing at that point. Typically, the head table's done eating. And then, yeah, everybody's got typically a drink most of the time. Um, you might have to make an announcement. Hey, we have a couple more tables left. If your drink, your drink is getting low, head up to the bar and grab yourself a drink. We're about to do toast speeches in just a brief moment. 
that's when I go over and I'm talking to whoever's giving the speech. I tell them the order and I also tell them how to hold the mic. If you have not seen that video, I do have a video on how to hold the mic and some tips and tricks on that as well. I'll leave that link in the description below. Uh, so yeah, so we, we go off that. Now, typically right after the toast speeches is when I like to do the dances, whether it's the first dance and any special dances beyond that, father, daughter, mother, son. I need to know specifics of the song. I need to know specifics of the order that you prefer. Um, sometimes it can get a little tricky when, um, unfortunately, like when um, there's a parent that is maybe not there uh, for some reason or the other. Um, so you might have to play uh, with with the timeline just a little bit. Uh, like there was actually a couple towards the end where there was um, a parent, a father of the bride that was missing not there and then uh, father of the groom um, so we had to be a little more strategic about for me because I really care about my couples it was about the emotion that was being created and trying to not um, completely deviate from that emotion but not necessarily dwell on that emotion either because it wasn't necessarily the the major point of the day but like I said to to help cultivate that emotion so one time I decided I was gonna call an audible because of the emotion that was going on and I started the dancing with with the slow song instead of just coming right out of the gate with uh, anything you know so um, so yeah, so it's, it, it, you, you have to be a little strategic and, and think about what's going on, um, and who's involved. So I need to know dances. Uh, so after toast speeches, I like to do dances, first dance, father, daughter, mother, son, any other special dances. And then typically I like to open the dance floor at this portion because toast speeches, first dances, usually and you're looking at probably another 20 to 40 minutes, depending on how many speeches and how many dances you have going on. At that point, most of the time, everybody's done with their food. So I like to get people up and get people moving. I like to make them work for the cake or make, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so usually another 20 to 30 minutes, then that's when we go back to the cake. Reason why I like to make them work for the cake and plus, I like to get people going because I don't want them to get comatose where they're like, oh, man, because what's the first thing people do? Like, uh, I want to find a cot to go sleep in. So, yeah, so it 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 helps move things along. Plus, in my opinion, it helps to for for you as uh, the bride and groom to be able to adjust throughout the night. So let's just say the first 30 minutes of dancing after the first dances and stuff. So you open the dance floor, let's just say you want to give, you know, because uh, th maybe you're going off to do sunset pictures or maybe you're going from table to table to, you know, say thank you and, and stuff like that. So maybe you might play something a little more old school, whether it's, you know, 90s country or, or 80s rock or some oldies to get some of the people satisfied or some 70s funk um, disco, uh, you know, portion. It's up to you. Or you can come right out of the gate and this is where I rely on my couples. I typically ask them for the first, at least first five songs. It doesn't have to be in order, but this may be the first five songs that get your girls out or get your dudes out or get your family out or get your mom. They'd be like, oh yeah, I love that song. Um, get them going, get them primed up, um, get them on the dance floor soon as possible so it's up to you how you want to take this approach with uh getting the dance floor started it could be in, in in several ways depending on what you want to do after the first dances so once again you may want to walk around from table to table or you may just want to out of the jump just get on the dance floor so just think of that think of the songs that you the vibe that you want to create um so let's see here so after like 30 minutes, that's usually when I like to do the cake or whatever that entails. 
some of my couples they don't want to announce the cake so that's okay too so they may just go off and get some pictures and then come back to the dance floor or at that time they may go from table to table depending on um the night and, and what all you're you're trying to do and try, trying to accomplish so not too long now you, you, depending back in the day um it used to be another 30 minutes then i'd do the bouquet and the garter usually after the bouquet and the garter we'd either do the like a dollar dance i know that uh, i'm just speaking the we don't all do that stuff anymore but i'm just saying if you're going to do like a shoe game if you're going to do any other game um that's roughly about the time that i would do it depending on once again when the photographer or videographer is leaving so yeah 20 30 minute gaps if you do that just for the fact that it gives time for the room to shift so for instance you know let's just say after the first dances uh you play 80s whatever 70s disco wow and then you go around from table to table go cut your cake now you could play 90s 2000 hip-hop or or, or or pop just for instance and then start to progress the night then you do the bouquet and the garter and the shoe game then you could do your 90s 2000 hip-hop something like that or or edm whatever you want to close the night out with for the, for the last roughly 45 minutes to an hour and a half um so once again uh you can pick the first five songs i always recommend uh and then also closing songs so are you going to play closing time if i don't get a song from my couples i typically like to uh i like to play their first dance as the last song of the night it just i don't know it just kind of ends really nice um so think of a last song or songs couple songs you might have something that you did back in college that you would like to do um, another point on slow songs i try at the most i usually do maybe six slow songs max that's just me unless that's the vibe you want to create six songs max is perfect uh two i usually try to do two back to back um so i'll do two here you know before grandma and grandpa leave two somewhere maybe like 45 minutes to an hour out from closing time and then the last two i like to be slow just to kind of prepare everybody for the moments ahead when they're going to turn on the lights and everybody has to exit and leave um any other song ideas now i do a must play maybe play and a do not play out of those three playlists the most important is the do not play i do not want to play a song that you do not want to hear so if you're not in a taylor swift you don't want to hear her put that on the do not playlist put that in the pdf um, i usually even make that a, a larger font than must play and maybe play now moving on to the must play or even the maybe play if you have a must play think about this and i've posted this within my my the couples group i like to mix and blend my songs so think about this let's just say every song gets two minutes okay most receptions in a typical four hour span at least in the in the midwest st louis most are four to five hours right for us yours may be different plan accordingly so that means depending on your guest count you may have an hour worth of dinner music and dinner and then you may have another 30 minutes or 30 45 minutes worth of formalities whether the dances and stuff like that so if that's an hour and 45 minutes out of four hours so now what you have two and two hours and 15 minutes left of the dancing portion outside of your cake and stuff like that so let's just say after the formalities you only have two hours left so what that's 120 minutes and then you divide that by two minutes per song how many minutes how many songs is that so don't give the dj 150 songs to pick out you know to choose out of that i want to hear 150 songs no it's 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 not it, it's not possible so don't don't get that in your head pick your favorite 25 and put it on the must plays and i'm talking must play three 
things, three criteria that it has to meet to get on the playlist. One, you just got to dance to it. You want to dance to it. Put it on the list. Two, you just got to hear it for some reason. If you're like I said, if it's like something you did back in college, um, back in high school, whatever that song you just got to play. Usually there's one or two of those. The other, the third one, is if I'm going to sing to it. Sweet Caroline. Uh, Pour Some Sugar on Me is more of a singable, singable tune. Um, stuff, stuff like that. It's like if I want to sing to that, once again, two, maybe four throughout the whole evening. So now you have roughly six songs that meet number two and three on the criteria. The other one is all dancing. Should be mostly dancing throughout the evening if that's the vibe you're going to create. So now you're looking at another, I don't know, 44 songs ish or so that you want to dance to you and your girls, you and your family want to legitimately dance. And that's not even line dances. Um, and it's up to you if you want to do line dances or um, core coordinated, chore choreographed, whatever you want to call it, you know, cha cha slide. That's what I'm talking about. So that's outside of those dances. And then let's just keep it real. M most couples don't want to hear it these days. It it's totally up to you. So I don't put it in there because unless you want it. If you want the chicken dance, put it in there. I'm not going to play the chicken dance. Put it on the do not playlist, whatever. That's on my personal do not playlist. There's some things on my personal do not playlist that I just don't play um, unless it is on my must play so three things get on that list 50 songs that's about where it should be give give the dj some room to play with if you know if he's if he seems like he's a cool dj and he's vibing with you and he kind of gets your taste give him some flexibility because for me i you know the week of your wedding i like to listen to you pandora because I feel like Pandora does a better job. Maybe Spotify sometimes. Um, I'll pull up an artist. Let's just say you want to hear. I'm from St. Louis. So Nelly, get ha uh, her. So you want to listen to that. That's you know one of your favorite songs. I'll probably pull up Nelly on Pandora. And then try to figure out some deeper cuts. That maybe. Oh yeah, I remember that song too. Woo! Um, yeah, whatever. So get in there uh, let the dj do do their thing if if they're vibing with you if not then totally pick out their songs now for me i've also had people uh pick out three songs throughout the entire day i'm talking about ceremony cocktail hour and reception and some couples pick every song for every minute whatever couple you are for me i'm totally cool with it don't get bogged down with the details as well because you're like oh man i didn't know what song to pick for the cake oh here's and here's a tidbit for the cake if you're like struggling for the first dance you're like oh i had four songs i wanted to pick for the first dance boom you got a cake song and you got two other songs that you want to use for maybe some slow songs um just so they're be able to be heard throughout the the uh your night um, another thing you can do is uh, send out RSVPs and, and gather songs uh, from them. That'll also help you with your do not playlist. Um, you know, if Cindy Lauper, girls just want to have fun. If you don't want to hear it and you got it on the RSVP list, put it on the do not playlist. Um, but the other flip side to that is sometimes when your family is like oh yeah i'll dance to that song sometimes they're they're expecting to hear that song too so just keep that in mind so you may have to be a little more upfront and honest be like hey what is one or two songs that you'll absolutely dance to can't make any promises that we'll play it or it may end up on our do not playlist so thank you in advance uh, it could be kind of funny and humorous as well so yeah, so that's that's something you can do as well. Uh, once again, uh, this let this be your day. You get one day. Let it be your day. Don't let it be your mom's day. Don't let it be your Uncle Tom's day. Don't let it be your grandma's day. Let it be your day. You know, um, I have some couples that 
you know, they get stressed over this stuff. Don't get stressed. Don't get bogged down with that type of stuff. Have fun with it. Um, also take moments to just celebrate what happened. That's why I don't create a timeline because most of the time, for instance, it's, it's a long day for you guys. It's a long day. Typically what happened was you guys were out just having a good time the night before then bride's getting up at four o'clock to start with makeup. Guess what? The groom is still sleeping. And then guess what? The, the bride's going through. Oh, I told I told Aunt Mildred I, I needed her here by 6 a.m. Where's Brittany at? I told her it was at this park. And I told the blah, blah, blah. And the stress is like, is it's already adding up. And then the photographer's there like, look left, look up, blah, blah, blah. All in the same time. The groom's still sleeping. <laughs> so it is what it is. And finally the groom gets up, you know, and starts moving. And it's just a lot of emotions. A lot of you looking this way, that ceremony, the being nervous for this, the finally getting over the ceremony. I need a drink. I can't drink. I got my dress. I need my this and then that. That's why I personally don't like creating timelines. I don't like to add to the stress. I like to let my couples just kind of pump the brakes, enjoy themselves, enjoy the day, enjoy the family. And I'll even encourage my couples to honestly just go off and enjoy each other for a minute. It's your day. Like, don't feel so stressed and bogged down with that you don't get to enjoy your day. That's you know, it's, it's a beautiful day, regardless if it rains, if it shines, it's a beautiful day. Enjoy it. Don't, you know, life, life, life is short. I have it, this, you know, 2022, my father passed away and it's like, man, it's just, life is short. Tomorrow is never guaranteed. So treat the day as that, you know, love each other every day. Um, and just just enjoy those moments because you never know when those you know those moments might go away so those are some of my tidbits i'm looking real quick uh also uh you know my um agreement has in there not only the calendar uh, not only what what i'll wear like what the colors are but also if i'm going to take requests from the guest or not totally up to you it could be a good thing it could be a horrible thing i had one one couple that was like oh my gosh she'll love this song it ended up being her and her husband's song that from their wedding i'm like it is what it is like i i cut it short because it was just them two on the dance floor and but i but she was part of the wedding party and and i trusted her i gave her that trust that she was giving me a great song that her f one of her best friends would really, really like. And it was really selfish of her. And I even told her, I was like, oh, I cut it. She was like, why did you cut it short? She goes, I was like, that's really selfish of you. Like you wanted a song for you and not for your friend, you know? So um, the, an, a, another story, I, the, another reason why I don't create a timeline, you know, like I had a mom that was like, we need to hurry up. We need to hurry up. And I was like, mom, I was like, <laughs> take a look at your daughter. Does she look like she's having a good time? She's like, oh yeah. I said, good. We're going to keep it like that. Now, and I've been DJing ever since you were a little girl. She kind of chuckled on that. And I said, look, I've been doing this for a while. I said, we're going to get to it. We're going to get to it real soon. But right now your daughter's really enjoying herself. So we're going to enjoy the, we're going to let her enjoy this moment. Okay, mom. She said, okay. We hugged it out. We continued on throughout the night. So once again, it just goes back to like, you know, my, my couples matter the most, you know, I, I'll tell whoever I need to tell. Like, no, my, that's my couple right there. They're enjoying the moment, whatever needs to happen. 
Uh, I know something I said during the ceremony. If, if, if for some reason, don't don't get into an argument. If you're in the planning stages, don't get into an argument with family or each other. They're like, hey, look, DJ Noji said, if if I have purple flowers, he ain't showing up. I don't know. Talk to him. If you need a card to pull while you're in the planning process, pull out DJ Noji. Be like, look, DJ, even if I'm not DJing your wedding, just say, hey, DJ Noji's not going to show up if I have pink balloons, mom. So get over it. Talk to him. She's like, who's DJ Noji? Just avoid it. Avoid the confrontation. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much it. I'll um, leave several links in the description. Hopefully this is helpful. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to, you can leave a comment. I can't guarantee I'll get to it uh, just because I'm always busy with other stuff. But uh, if you're one of my couples, hopefully this was helpful. Feel free to still follow up and ask some questions uh, let it be fun enjoy the process create spotify playlists now this is my tidbit on creating playlists put your name in the playlist it may be you may be user 10759654 i'm not going to know who that is so i once you know i'm start working on your playlist i'm going to have to figure out okay how did they send it to me was it through text was it through email so Put it all in the event flow PDF, copy and paste the link, put it in there, put your name on there, put what it's for, ceremony. Um, now, once again, you don't have to do my job, but you do not have to do my job, but I want to make it easier on you, especially when it comes to the must plays. I want you to listen to your playlist. I want you to be like, yeah, I love that song. I'm definitely going to dance to that song because if you're not going to dance to it, psh, cut it out and just get rid of it that there's not enough time unless you unless you're going to pay for a long day i do have a couple coming up um in a couple months that they're wanting a long day because that's just that's just how they roll so it's gonna be it's gonna be a long day i feel like ears are gonna be a little more fatigued and you know people are gonna start pooping out a little bit because it's gonna be long drinking but hey i'll let you know how that story goes uh when it happens but should be a good time either way regardless but i'm just saying you, you whatever time slot that you have maximize on that and just make sure it's all your top favorite songs not not the, okay i can kind of do without that song it make it your favorites make it bangers make it the ones you love make it the ones you absolutely want to hear thousands of songs pick that song that's it so, well, this will conclude everything and hope you got what you needed and I will see you on the next one. Talk to you soon. Yeah.